Hello and welcome to the tutorial on how to make an event on Event Espresso um, on the Sequoia website. Um, an event is uh, similar to a class, but it doesn't necessarily require registration. We want to make sure that it shows up here on the calendar, but it can also show up on the events page here. The events page shows two different types of information. It can show a post that we have decided to be um, listed as an event but it also can show any kind of class or other kind of a event from Event Espresso that we want to also be on the calendar. So in order to make something that shows up here in this list and on the calendar, all we want to do is log in and go to the dashboard. And on the left side of the menu, we want to go down to Event Espresso and we want to go to Events. And if this was something that was a repeating event that you had already a description for, you could go find that and copy it at this time. Or you could just make a new event. And there's a button right up here for that. I want to title it, um, the new event. And I'm going to add the description here. And in general, we've been adding the descriptions where we repeat the date here, just because in the listing view, where the way the dates were showing up, the way that this plugin had it, wasn't very aesthetic. So it added just too much detail, like the time and the year and blah, blah, blah. So we'll just say <coughs> that we put it in our, in our own thing. Now, I want you to notice one thing I just did. I just hit return and notice how it added two spaces there. Um, in Wor WordPress, it's assuming that if you hit return that you are wanting to add space between two paragraphs. Um, in order to add white space or on, a, on a blog, for instance, you would want to have uh, uh, two spaces there. But if we're making a list like this, then we probably want it to um, just have one return, not the double spaces. So if we do what's called a soft return or a shift return, then I can add in the next information. Let's say it's at 4 p.m. and if it's free. Now let's say I want all of this information to be bold. I can highlight all that text and I can say bold. I'm going to add the year there. Okay, then I'm going to add the description goes here. And let's say I want to add a photo. I'm going to click at the be beginning of the text because I want it to line up with the top of the text. So I'm going to just put my cursor right there and I'm going to hit add media. And if I've already uploaded the file, I can just find it here. Otherwise, I can use this to upload a new file. But let's say I just want to have a nice picture of, let's say, this. This is my nice picture here. So a couple things you should know about uh, the photos over here. If you want to add a caption, you can. Other parts of the website use the description field. But this, if you want to add something underneath it, will be in the caption field. If you want the photo to align so that the text is on one side of the image and the photo is on the other, you can use this alignment. For most of the other classes, we have them aligned right so that the text is on the left and the photo is on the right. Um, and then here is where we have the size. I can either use the full size image or a smaller size image. A medium is usually pretty good for most of the things we're doing. If I wanted to link to a different um, file, let's say a custom URL, let's say the maybe the image was a link of the coffee shop that we were going to meet at. I could put the URL right there if I decided I wanted to. Um, but let's just say we're not going to do any of that. So I'm going to hit insert into page and there's the image. And so now I'm going to scroll down here and here's the venue information. If the uh, venue is already here, then we just select it out of the list. If you want to make a new venue, then you're going to have to go over here to Venues. Now, if I do it now, I'm going to not be able to save what I've done. So you're going to want to hit Publish. Go hit, go and do the Venues, make your new venue, and then come back to this class and continue to edit it. Um, but let's say Panera Bread is peachy, so we'll go there first. So now this is the important part here. We want to add a date and time for each time this uh, event is going to occur. So for instance, if it's meet and mingle, then we're going to have several of those because they're uh, weekly. Um, but if it's a one-time event, we'll just put it in once. So when you click in the text box here, a calendar will pop up where I can pick the date here and I can pick the time. 
and these are just slider bars so you can see here that's 4 p.m. and that's at 4.00 or I could say 4.30 by doing it like that <coughs> and hit done and then the event end time then is probably on the same day and let's say it's at uh, 6 p.m. and I'd say done and let's say that this was going to be a repeating event um, so I would add a new date and time and I would say that this new one is on January 19th at 4 p.m. and it ends on January 19th at 6 p.m. and there we are we've added a new date now if this is a free event, then you don't have to worry about this section at all. If it's an event that you want people to pay for, then you can title it here. Free ticket doesn't seem to make sense, but let's say it's an event fee. And you could say when those tickets you want to go on sale, if you want them to go on sale today or on a certain date, you can put that there. And how long you want them to be on sale, if you want the tickets to go offline um, prior to the event or if you want it to go, be on for sale all the way up until the event you put those dates here and then the price would go here um, quantity is how many tickets you want to sell so if it's a limited event where you can only have 30 people come then you would want to put you know 30 people here and that's the bulk of that section then down here there's a bunch of things that aren't relevant custom fields excerpt discussion notifications all that is fine don't need to worry about that um, I kind of then like to move over here to the right and kind of work my way back up these questions on the side here because we have featured image and featured post we're not using either of those um, questions for registrant um, on the classes they really like to gather the address information in addition to the personal information so that's like their mailing address so if you want to collect that too for any of these events you can select these boxes this section here questions for additional registrants is if you wanted to add um, if, if you wanted to let them register for themselves and their friend then you would be gathering information on their friend by selecting these boxes <clears throat> do not need to worry about the HTTPS event categories is very important if it is an event you want to hit the event box if you want it on the public calendar you want to put it up there if you want it on the members calendar you want to put it there if it's a members only event you can just select that only and it'll only show up on the members calendar nowhere else for instance when you're changing out the gallery for a new show you can just put that calendar listing right there and then tags are not important <clears throat> maximum number of tickets allowed per order um, this is if uh, a pull down box when somebody's registering and they you want to say I want to allow them to buy you know two tickets at once or three tickets at once most people aren't going to buy any more than maybe five I can't imagine so I've just been using five uh, display ticket selector so if it is an event that they're going to register for then you could say yes but if it is not you just say no and then all this information down here is completely irrelevant it doesn't doesn't matter the only thing that is important here is the event times um, registration page and event phone number those are all only if you um, have an alternative registration that that you're putting on your website maybe it's a class that's held somewhere else I don't know so then we're gonna hit publish and then if all goes well um, the event now should show up on a few places on the on the website oops I thought I had it loaded and so we're gonna go to the website and we're gonna go to the, <clears throat> the events page and at the end here there should be coffee with Jill there it is and then if we go to the calendar page we'd have to find it in January and I don't really remember what date I put it on but oh there it is January 12th so um, now that event is showing up on the events page and the calendar page and we're all set yippee thanks for listening talk to you later